Hello and welcome to our new YouTube tutorial. In this video we will create a button with a nice and cool hover effect using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Once we hover over the button then the yellow circle will expand to the entire button. It doesn't matter which side you hover over the button from, this yellow element will appear from every side. Before we dive deeper into our project, I'm going to say a special and huge thank you to Skillshare for helping our channel by sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online platform and community for courses on all kinds of topics. It makes education available and accessible for anyone who wants to learn something new or just level up the skills. You can take the courses by watching videos and then practice what you have learned by making your class projects by using your new skills and knowledge. Skillshare offers thousands of great classes on topics like illustration, graphic design, web development, music production, photography and much more. It is a place where millions of students come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes, handsome projects and feedback from a community of millions for a very affordable price at less than $10 a month annually. I'm excited to tell you that the first thousand people who will use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So you'll be able to get access to all different classes on the platform, learn some new stuff and develop your skills that can be applied in real life. So join up. Alright, so we are ready to start to create the button. As I said, it will be created based on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Actually, this button is a simplified version of the button from our upcoming Udemy course, which will be released soon, so stay tuned. I've created a new folder on the desktop called Ripple button, which right now is empty. Let's open it in VS Code and create our working files for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Then open index.html file and create the basic HTML document. We need to place here an exclamation mark and then hit tab or enter. So here we have the basic HTML tags. At first let's change the title. I'm going to place here ripple button and then link the CSS and JavaScript files I'm going to open link tag in the head element and then we have to specify the path of the file. As for the JavaScript, I'm going to open script tag right above the closing body tag and we have to specify here the path of the JavaScript file. Alright, so we are ready to start to write the code. Before that I'm going to run the project to the browser. For that I'm going to use one of the VS Code packages called a live server. It allows us to run the project live to the browser and make the changes and updates without refreshing the page each time. Let's place the editor and the browser side by side, like so, and get started. So I'm going to start with the HTML markup. Let's open div tag with a class container. This element will contain the entire content, I mean the button. The button will be created using a link element. Let's open it with the class btn. And then pass here span element with a content explore. Alright, so that's it about the HTML markup. Let's start to write the CSS. First of all, I'm going to define some common and reset styles. Let's select every element using an asterisk. First of all, I'm going to get rid of default margin and padding from all the elements. Let's set both of them to zero. Also, I'm going to make box sizing, border box. Then, let's get rid of default underline from the link element using text decoration, none. And also, I'm going to change the font family. Let's set it to career new monospace. Alright, so these tiles are applied to the elements. Throughout this project, I'm going to use rem as the measurement unit. 
by default one RAM equals 16 pixels because the font size of the HTML element is equal to 16 pixels. I want to convert one RAM to 10 pixels and for that we have to decrease the font size of the HTML element. Let's set it to 62.5%. So as you can see the font size of the link element became smaller. Ok, let's go ahead and start to work on the container. First of all, I'm going to define its width and height. Let's set width to 100%. As for the height, I'm going to make it 100% of the viewport. So we need 100 VH. And also change the background color. Make it dark gray using 262626. Alright, next I'm going to place the button in the center and for that I'm going to use Flexbox. We need display flex. Then for horizontal centering, I'm going to set justify content to center. As for the vertical centering, we need align items center. So as you can see, the button is placed in the center, and now it's time to customize it. Let's select BTN. And first of all, let's define its position. I'm going to make it absolute. Then I'm going to define the width and height for the button. Let's make both of them 18 RAM. Then I'm going to change the background color. Let's use 9B O E O E. And also make the button rounded using border radius 50%. Ok, so the next thing that I'm going to do regarding the button is to create a border. Let's set its width to 0.2 RAM. Then the style is going to be dotted. As for the color, I'm going to make it white. Alright, that's it regarding the button. Next, I'm going to take care of this span element. First of all, I'm going to place it in the center. For that, let's use again Flexbox. I'm going to grab those three lines and paste them here. So this span element is centered. Let's go ahead and style it. Select BTN span. At first I'm going to set its position to relative. Then change the color, make it white. Also I'm going to increase the font size, make it 1.8 RAM. Then I'm going to make the font bolder. Let's set font weight to 600. Also transform text into uppercase. And lastly create some space between the letters. Let's set letter spacing to 0.2 RAM. Alright, so this span element is customized and now we have to create a hover effect. Let's take a look at the finished project. So once we hover over the button then the yellow circle will cover the content. It appears from the exact side where we enter the mouse. We will create this effect using JavaScript and CSS animations. Let's go to the script.js file and start to write the code. The first thing that we have to do is to get the coordinates of the cursor inside of the button. I mean we need to get the top and left positions of the cursor measured from the top and left edges of the button. Before we do that we need to select the button itself. So let's create a new variable. I'm going to call it btn and then select button using query selector method we need to specify here the class name btn. After that we have to attach to it an event listener with a mouse enter event. Also we have to pass here the callback function which will be executed once we hover over the button. Actually the mouse enter method fires only once when we hover over the element. So as we said we have to get the left and top positions of the cursor inside of the button. In order to get these positions we need to use the client X and client Y properties. They give us the top and left positions of the cursor measured from the top and left edges of the viewport. So in order to get the positions of the cursor inside the button we need to find the difference between the client X and client Y properties and the left and top positions of the cursor. So to make it more understandable, let's go ahead and write the code. At first I'm going to pass here an event object. 
Next, I'm going to show you how to get the information about the element. For that, we can use one of the methods called get bounding client rect. Let's run to the console and see what this method gives us. I'm going to pass here e dot target dot get bounding client rect. Then I'm going to inspect the page and switch to the console tab. So if I hover over the button, then we'll get an object called DOM rect. If I drop down it, you'll find here a couple of different properties. We have the positions, I mean bottom, left, right and top. Also we have here the width and height of the element. Besides that, you can see here X and Y properties. And actually they are the same as the left and top properties. So we can use those values to calculate the left and top positions of the cursor inside the button. For that, I'm going to create a new variable. Let's call it left. So we need here e dot client x and we have to subtract to it e dot target dot get bounding client rect dot left. Let's check in the console what the left variable gives us. So when we hover over the button, we will get the left position of the cursor, but now inside of the button. I mean it is measured from the left edge of the button. Alright, in the same way we need to define the top position, we can simply duplicate this code, then change the name of the variable, we need top, and also we need here client Y instead of client X. And we need here top again. Alright, so both positions are defined and now we need to create a new element on those positions. We will do that using one of the dump methods called create element. I'm going to declare a new variable. Let's call it ripple. Then down below we need to create a new div element. As I said, I'm going to use create element method. We need to specify here the tag name div. After that we need to define left and top positions of the ripple and we will use the values that we define here. So we need here ripple dot style dot left and it should be equal to the value of the left variable. In the same way, I'm going to define the top position. Let's duplicate this line of code and change left into top. Okay, so the element is created, but we need to append it to the button. For that, we have to use one of the methods called prepend. So we need btn.prepend. And we have to pass here the variable ripple. Okay, so in order to prove the element is creating on hover, let's switch to the elements tab and then hover over the button. So as you can see, div element is created inside the button and also we have here left and top positions. All right, next we need to customize this element in the CSS file. Let's create a new class and call it ripple. So in order to make a left and top positions work, we need to define the position of the ripple. Let's make it absolute. Then define width and height. I'm going to set both of them to 100%. And also change the background color. Make it E7 B E 8 Alright, that's it about the styles of the ripple right now. In order to apply them to the element, we have to add this class to the elements class list. So we need ripple dot class list followed by the add method and we have to specify here ripple. Okay, so if I hover over the button then the new element will appear. If I hover over the button multiple times then the multiple elements will be created. But we will fix that soon. First of all, let's make this element rounded. 
let's use border radius 50% and also we have to move it to the left hand upwards by minus 50% let's use transform translate with minus 50% twice okay so now we have a better result and it's time to create an animation so by default width and height of this element will be 0 and once we hover over the button then the size of the ripple should increase with animation so let's create CSS keyframes I'm going to call it ripple anim overall we will have two different steps at 0% we need width and height to be 0 as for the 100% we should increase width and height to 100%. Alright, so the keyframes are ready. Now we have to apply these styles to the element using an animation property. Let's pass here ripple anim. As for the duration, it's going to be 0.5 seconds. So now if I hover over the button, then the element will appear smoothly. But as you see, we have here a couple of issues. Once the element appears and its size is increased, then it hides. So we need to maintain these tiles which we have at 100%. For that we need to use a value called forwards. So now this problem is fixed. Element no longer hides. The next issue is that the size of the element is not enough to cover the button. So we have to increase it. Let's make it 200%. So now the size is twice bigger, but still it's not enough because if I enter the mouse and stop it at the edge of the button, then the ripple won't cover. So let's increase within height slightly. I'm going to make them 210%. Alright, so now the problem is fixed. The next thing that I'm going to take care of is to hide the outer parts of the ripple. For that we have to use overflow hidden. Alright, so now we have a much better result. The next thing that I want to do is to get rid of the ripple. Once the mouse leaves the button, we have to use one of the events called mouse leave. Let's attach to the button event listener with mouse leave event. Also we need here a callback function. Next we need to remove the ripple. For that I'm going to use remove child method we have to specify here ripple okay so finally we are done the button works perfectly it has nice effects and animations i think it was interesting and kind of different and i hope you liked it if you enjoyed the video then please thumbs up comment below subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified on coming tutorials see you next time